Hello and welcome if there's anyone out there to the first episode of the Elizabeth Knits podcast. My name is Elizabeth and this is intended to be a small friendly corner of the internet where I can share with you what I have knitted, what I am currently knitting on and so that's works in progress and um, anything that I'm thinking of knitting so dream knitting and pattern stalking and any yarns that I've acquired and what I'm thinking that I might do with them so you are all very welcome here I am coming to you from the small town of Halifax which is in West Yorkshire in England in the UK it's a place with lots of really strong um, historical connections to the textile industry and there's still quite a lot of woolly, yarny goodness that happens here, which is really lucky for me and for all the local community. So, first of all, I'll share with you what I'm wearing today, which I finished in within the last six weeks. So today, anything that I share with you that's a finished object, I'm going to try and share probably about the last six weeks worth of things just because it's the first episode and I wasn't sure how far back to go. So I'm wearing the Petite Knit Weekend Slipover. Um, this is a project that was a little while in the making because I bought the yarn for it at a relatively local yarn festival to me called Yarndale, which is an amazing festival. If you ever get the chance to go, I would highly recommend it. It's held about an hour away from me in the Skipton Auction Mart which the rest of the year is um, an agricultural centre and a um, place where livestock is traded um, but everything is sort of tidied up and all of the vendors have these amazing beautiful yarny stands so if you haven't been before I would really really recommend Yarndale anyway digress already so I'm wearing the petite knit weekend slipover which is knitted up in two strands. So the first is a strand of Cascade 220, which is 100% Peruvian Highland wool. Um, you can see that this is one of the heathered shades. It's a really beautiful mixed mild mid gray tone. Um, uninspiringly, it's actually called Color 8011, um, but you can get a good picturing of what the tone is like. It's slightly lighter than this has come out because I've held it with a beautiful strand of silk mohair, which as I said, I purchased, I think I said, I purchased at Yarndale from one of the vendors there. This came from the gorgeous ladies at the knitting shed who were so helpful. Um, I went knowing, I'm a relatively organized knitter most of the time, um, and I went to Yarndale knowing that I cannot be trusted to just go and buy whatever because I won't then have a clue what to do with it. So I went knowing that I wanted a sweater quantity of um, of one item and then the exact quantities for this pattern. So I went knowing that I needed maybe around 100 grams of really good beautiful quality silk mohair and I was happy to invest in that, it was a proper treat. So um, this is the gorgeous Ainsworth and Prin hand dyed silk mohair, which is just double checking, 72% kid mohair and 28% silk. Um, it's a lace weight, obviously it's hand wash only, making this garment hand wash only, but I am happy with that. It's a slip over. It's not something that I'm wearing next to skin generally. So it's not something that I'm anticipating is going to need washing like every couple of wears, for example. Um, as I say, the amazing ladies from the knitting shed were so helpful. They helped me to decide on a colourway. Um, I had a lot to consider with this. You can see the beautiful, um, you can see it really well here, the gorgeous shiny silk car and then the lovely fluffy mohair halo that it's got on it and it's combined beautifully with this um, Cascade 220 even though next to each other 
they really look quite different colours. I feel like they've worked really beautifully together to give me this gorgeous um, sort of leaning blue but warm grey. I don't know quite how they've managed that but I love it. Um, a word about the pattern. The, I'm really late to the petite knit party. I've been knitting for a relatively long period of time but have really got into it more and more in the last three years or so. Um, but I'd never knitted a petite knit pattern before, even though I think they're gorgeous and they're stylish. I've always been a bit unsure as to whether they were for me or not. And when I saw this, I knew that it was. So I'll stand up and show it to you very quickly. Hopefully I'm not standing in too much of the light there. Um, you can see it's got this lovely underarm detail and the ribbed, they're sort of a dropped sleeve or a dropped shoulder. And then it's just ribbing um, a long, I don't know what to call this, it's not quite a turtleneck is it, but close. Um, so we've got, it's worked from the top of the back downwards and then you stop and pick up for the front in this lovely like near invisible seam um, on the shoulders and then you work in the round down from there. For me that meant a slight change of needle to adjust my tension a bit um, from going from working flat to working in the round but I was quite happy to do that and I was quite confident knowing that I'd get what I wanted. Um, there's a few knitting firsts for me here so like I said late to the party. First petite knit pattern first um, slip over because they've obviously become a bit more um, on trend in the last few years and I really love this one. I'm really happy that I've knitted one for myself instead of buying one. I love to do that where I can. Um, it was also my first Italian bind off. I've used the Kitchener Stitch lots of times because I've knitted a lot of pairs of socks over the last few years but this was my first um, time of doing like those double knitted setup rows and then the Italian bind off and I'm pretty happy with how it's turned out. It's nice and neat, it's a lovely tidy finish, it was a bit time consuming um, but I just sat down and knew that it was going to take me a little while to finish off. So I think that's about everything I've got to say. I'd recommend the pattern, it's well written, it's clear um, and there are lots and lots of resources online as well to help out. So. That's what I'm wearing today and that's also one of my finished objects from the last few weeks. Um, I entered this into the Knitting First Knit Along which was hosted by Rebecca from the Cray Bayer and Lisa from and so on. I hope I've got both of their handles right. Um, they both do amazing podcasts um, and Cray Bayers is a relatively new one. I'm sure if you're here that you'll have seen it but it's one of my favourites to watch and um, she has heavily influenced me to do my own version of a knitting podcast. So thank you, Rebecca. Um, I'm going to show you now what else I've been knitting on. So I've, like I said, I've gone loosely back the last six weeks or so. Um, over Christmas, I had COVID. I tested positive on Christmas Eve, which as I'm sure lots of people have had plans spoiled in the last few years. Um, it really ruined my plans for not the first time. Anyway, I felt a bit sorry for myself. So on Boxing Day, I decided that I'd do something productive with the little energy that I had got and I cast on a pattern that I'd never knitted before. Um, I've never knitted a cardigan for myself before and this was a really enjoyable knit. So this is the Lily Kate Makes um, be thankful cardigan <laughs> very apt so I won't put this on if I can figure out how I will pop some pictures in and um, this is a lovely cropped oh, I'm really sounding the light there this is a beautiful cropped cardigan and um, with a lovely dropped shoulder and a nice loose sleeve that then pulls in at the end into a nice cuffed finish. Um, partly out of necessity, this is knitted from stash because obviously Boxing Day COVID, couldn't go anywhere to buy any yarn and nothing was going to get delivered really quickly. 
and I just wanted to be knitting. So this um, yarn has been in my stash for a while. It's a lovely, somewhere between petrol and navy, wool blend Aran. It's got these beautiful speckles of sort of tan and beige and some navies and even a tiny bit of black in there from place to place. Um, and I really like the depth and the texture that that gives it. Um, this would also be gorgeous knitted up in a completely flat colour, Aaron, because the pattern's got some really beautiful details. Um, it's knitted bottom up in the round um, and then you split where you split where you would split for the arms and then later come back and pick up the stitches. It means that the cardigan is seamless, which I really like because less finishing. Um, however, there's gorgeous details like this. So you can see that there's like a faux seam down the edge, which you do with a, a stitch pattern. Um, it's super simple to do and really effective. I think it looks gorgeous. And then on the shoulders here, I, this is another knitting first for me, even though I've been knitting a while. Um, this is a three needle bind off on the shoulder and I feel like that gives it a little bit of structure which I think um, I really really like that. I think it makes it look better on me because it is quite boxy and oversized and I think I need that little bit of structure to add to it. Um, you pick up and knit the ribbing for the button band and you do single row buttonholes. Um, after I was out of isolation, <laughs> once this cardigan was actually finished, because it didn't take me very long to knit at all, um, I then went and picked up these gorgeous, slightly shiny copper buttons from our local haberdashery. Um, yeah, so the Be Thankful Lily Kate Makes cardigan, um, and I really recommend that pattern. Like I said, this was knitted up in stash. Any lovely snug Aran weight would be perfect. Um, and the last finished object that I'm going to show you, because I do have another finished object, but it was a gift and I've given it away, so I'm not going to share that one with you. The last finished object is, before I show you, I'm going to say a word about my general colour palette. Um, I like earthy, warm tones, I am generally drawn to the kind of thing that you can see behind, like light pinks um, and more of the like autumnal colours and greys like I'm wearing and neutrals, lots of cream, quite a lot of my wardrobe is like just earthy colours, um, blues and greens, I'm not really a neon kind of a girl although there's a place for it and there's a place for it for me as well, totally. Um, and then I decided that I wanted to knit a Soldotna by, a Soldotna crop, although mine's not cropped, um, by Caitlin Hunter of Boyland Knitworks. And I stalked Instagram for like weeks over what colour combination and even if I pick the colours, what order did I want them in? And in the end, I think sometimes you've just got to go to a place where you can hold the colours together or squidge the yarn yourself. So I went back to that lovely haberdashery where I got my copper buttons from for the Be Thankful cardigan. And I took my three-year-old with me. He was only two at the time. Um, he's only just turned three. <laughs> um, and he helped me to pick. So... This is my Caitlin Hunter Boyland Knitworks Soldotna, um, Soldotna crop. Sorry, that's funny in the light for you there. There we go. Um, and it is bright. <laughs> it's a lot brighter than a lot of the things that I wear in general day to day, but I love it. Um, it's a really happy, joyful, I'm going to be wearing this like spring, summer time and I just love it. I think it's gorgeous all this beautiful lice stitch worked in. Anyway, I'll go back to that. I'm really happy with it. Um, the Soldotna is a really, really well-known pattern. If you're on Instagram, you'll definitely have seen it. If you're on Ravelry, you'll be really familiar with it. There's so many versions of it, all gorgeous. 
it's really easy to adapt because you can add in extra rows where you want. Um, I'm talking like everyone knows what it is. So this is knitted as a top down circular yoke sweater. Um, you knit this section of colour work following, I can't remember what they're called, following a chart. And um, it tells you when to change from colour one, two, three, four. And then the body is knitted in this sort of, I'm pretty sure it's called light stitch, um, which you can see I've done in this orangey shade, which is called pumpkin. Um, it's sort of a more earthy orange than it's showing up here. It's showing up very, very bright. <laughs> but yeah, it's um, with cream and grey speckles on it for me. So um the one thing that i would have to say about this is caitlin hunter must have compared to me a fairly loose gauge um i knitted this in the size three which was where my measurements went to um however i've seen quite a few people comment on this the neckline you can obviously see is just like a normal like crew neck sweater neckline however on the picture on the pattern um it looks quite wide it looks like it's sort of around here like not quite a scoop but somewhere between a scoop and a crew neck um there is no way no matter how aggressively i had blocked that neckline out that i was gonna get that um, and I was fine with that. I tried it on, it's top down. I popped it on spare yarn and I tried it on really close to the beginning because I'd seen that quite a few people had advised doing that just in case you ended up with a tighter neckline than you thought. I've got plenty of space for my head in there, but, and clearly I'm fine with things around my neck. But if you're someone who doesn't like things high up around your neck and you look at this all doctor and think that's perfect for me, just make sure that you like, just adapt the neckline a little or cast on a few more stitches. I'm sure there'll be people online who've, um, or even on YouTube, who've explained ways that you can adapt the sole dot net. I think it's a gorgeous pattern, but I just think the picture on the pattern cover isn't exactly the same as what I've ended up with. And I'm not mad about that. I'm really happy. I live in the north of England. It is cold here. I have got very little time in my year where a short sleeve sweater is the right thing to wear but I love the pattern so I knitted it anyway and um, I could 100% have carried on these arms and had a long sleeve sweater but I really liked the look of it as it was and um, what I have done to adapt the pattern though is I think you do I think the pattern says to do about five repeats of the chart that has this light stitch section and for me that would have hit me I'm not a tall person I'm like five foot six I don't know what that is in centimeters sorry <laughs> I like five foot six um but that would have hit me quite high which would have been fine for wearing with dresses and things but um I kind of picked out these colors knowing that I'd be likely to wear this with jeans um and for like quite casual wear so I needed it to meet like where my belt line would be on my jeans um, so I just knitted that same chart until I was happy with the length. I tried it on a few times and then when I was within a couple of centimetres, like two inches maybe, um, I then started the final section of chart, which is just this bit where you then switch to the rib. Um, I'm really happy with it. I love it. I've worn it already. I blocked it and wore it. Um, even though it's still winter here, I've still managed to get it in there and wear it. I'm hoping that I'll get lots more wear out of this it's spring. I feel like it's a really nice, bright, happy cut palette. I'm really pleased with it. Um, what I didn't tell you is what I've knitted it in. So, um, like I said, this was a treat knit that I'm wearing right now um, because I, I invested in beautiful silk mohair that was hand dyed. Um, but I am not a person who's always going to do that and it's not practical for all of my wear, all of my clothes that I wear to be silk mohair and things that have to be hand washed because I've got a toddler at home and a job and a life and, and I am not willing to spend all of my time hand washing things. So the next make, the Be Thankful sweater, is something that 
the Be Thankful cardigan is something I'll be able to pop in the washing machine because I know from the ball band that it says that's machine washable and I have done it and it does work, it's fine. Um, on a wool cycle, I'm safe with that. This is knitted in Sirdar four ply baby snuggly, <laughs> um, which is really super soft, really lovely drapey DK. Um, it's, I think, a combination of acrylic and polyamide maybe to give it that lovely softness of like real natural fibres. Um, yeah, I, I'm not generally a big fan of acrylic, um, especially not the squeaky kind. I would much prefer to knit in natural fibres. But for some things, I think you just want to be able to toss them in the washing machine. And because I'm going to wear this in warmer weather, um, I quite like the idea that I'll just be able to pop this in on a wool wash and it should stand up to plenty of washing. I know from knitting things for my own little boy that this particular yarn stands up to washing really, really well. I've never had any colour run with it, um, which made me feel confident about the colour work. And it made it really affordable as well. Um, because this is only a relatively small project, I've used, I think they're like tiny little skeins, like 50 gram skeins, and I've used one and a tiny bit of the denim blue, um, less than half of the grey, maybe like two thirds of the, I think this, um, quite adorable, I think this white, like off white is called rice pudding, which is like a UK dessert. I'm, well, actually, no, we've totally stolen it from other cultures across the world, but gorgeous anyway. Um, and then the pumpkin shade I've used all but two skeins of, which is still under 100 grams. Um, I think I've said all four there. So, yeah, sorry if that sounded all a bit disjointed, but anyway, Soldotna um, sweater, Soldotna crop sweater by Bolland Knitworks, which is Caitlin Hunter, the designer, and I'd knitted it up in super affordable four-ply Sirdar Baby Snuggly. Um, Sirdar is a company that's relatively local to me as well, so I quite like to go and buy their yarns because I feel like I'm supporting something a bit local as well. I know that they're manufactured elsewhere a lot of the time, but the actual company is based not that far away from me, so quite a few local yarn shops and um, local haberdasheries stock their yarn too. Anyway, all that to say, um, three finished objects there and now I'm going to talk to you about what I've cast on recently and a little bit of dream knitting kind of combined because I've been swatching for some things to decide what next. So, um, here, slight disclaimer here, my sister's having a baby, a second baby, and she's having a little girl. She is really super excited, we all are. Both she and I have little boys, and before her little boy was born, I knitted them a receiving blanket, which is like a little snuggly car seat sized blanket that they use to bring baby home in. So what she's asked me to do this time is knit her a girly version. Um, because last time it was a surprise, so it was quite neutral colours, um, a self-striping yarn, and just really super soft, and they used it quite a lot. The little blanket went in the wash a lot, because young babies don't keep things tidy the way that we might like them to. So, um, all that to say, I've cast on, uh, using some stash yarn, a uh, super girly little blanket. Sorry if you can hear my squeaky chair, it's just the right height um, for talking to you here. So this is a really simple free pattern that I found online. Um, it's for a diagonal baby blanket. Mm, I'll double check who it's actually made by. I don't know if I've written it down or not. Might have to pop it in afterwards. Um, I feel like it might be like Red Heart or someone like that. Anyway, so 
This is a really simple, you can find lots of them on Ravelry, corner to corner baby blanket with a little yarn over to make this lovely simple eyelet pattern down the side. Um, I am using yarn that is very out of character for me. Um, it's not squeaky, it's really soft, but this is definitely pretty much 100% polyester or acrylic. Um, it's in a very, very soft, what used to be referred to as baby pink. I'm not sure that I like that terminology, but this really lovely soft pink with a tiny little bit of sparkle, which I think you can just about see when I move it around. Um, even though it's in a synthetic yarn, I think it will block out a little bit to like even out the stitching and make those eyelets really beautiful and stand out. Um, like I said, it's not what I'd normally be knitting, but it's really nice to have a really simple project. I like to have something simple on the go all of the time. And um, I think this will be really cute. My plan is I'm using stash here, and this is very deep stash from before I quite knew what I was buying, I think, like quite a few years ago. Um, obviously it doesn't matter that I've had it a long time because it's synthetic. Um, so I've got one ball of the very, very pale pink and I've got one ball of the white with the sparkle in as well. So my plan is to go about a third of the size that I want the blanket to be and then start to um, swap between a row or two of this and a row or two of the white and then transition to the white so that it will be kind of a two-tone effect going across. So that's my plan. So that's not on the pattern. The pattern is just for a basic straight, straight across diagonal add your extra stitches as you go kind of blanket um, and my plan is to just adapt that slightly to be two-tone and I think that will look really cute and practicality when you've got small children sometimes you just want things that you can chuck in the wash and I know for a fact that that is what my sister wants so that's what she's getting so that's my simple project that I've got going at the moment which I can pick up anywhere and I don't have to figure out where I am because it's the same pattern repeat for every row. And then um, I like to have like something relatively simple, like something like that, or socks, or something that's a quick finish, like a hat, um, and then something that maybe requires a bit more brain work, so some colour work, or I haven't tried cables yet, they're on my list. Um, even though I've been knitting a long time, cables have never quite made it to me yet, but I have seen a really nice cable sweater now that I've got my eye on, more on that later. Um, so my other cast on is the new release by Knit Pearl Girl, who I absolutely love on Instagram. Um, and this is an acquisition and a stash project. Um, both in one because I'm using up some yarn that I had stashed that I wouldn't have used but because I'm holding it double with something else it now makes it in my opinion really beautiful um, so I have cast on the Knit Pearl Girls brand new release which is the Crescendo sweater I'd seen lots of test knits for this including Rebecca from the Grey Bears. like I said she's heavily knitfluenced me um, so here it is so far I bought this pattern yesterday and um, also acquired the yarn for it, well the yarn that I'm holding as the second strand um, yesterday as well and I cast it on yesterday afternoon and I'm already here, it's a really lovely, I'm not a super speedy knitter, um, this is a really lovely quick knit. Um, as I mentioned earlier, usually I'm a bit more drawn to like the warmer earthy tones but I am really partial to a blue or a green as well. And I think this will, again, look really nice with jeans, which I wear quite a lot um, for chasing my toddler around in. So you, this is not blocked out or anything, but you can already see it's got this beautiful um, eyelet lace pattern, which I think when it's blocked will really stand out beautifully. There are loads and loads of pictures of the test knits of this on Instagram um, and there's some beautiful photos of it on Ravelry as well of the ones that she's made. Um, so yeah, um, so far 
I highly recommend the pattern. Obviously, I'm about halfway through the yoke, perhaps. I've only been working on it for like 24 hours, um, but I love it. And I can see myself making this again, even though it's got a really distinctive pattern feature. I think it would look, just look so different knitted up in different yarns or different combinations of yarn. I've kind of gone for this like marbled effect because what, and I did swatch for this, um, what I decided to do was I had this um, really gorgeous, super soft um, merino single ply yarn in my stash, which I bought, I don't even know how many balls of this I bought probably five or six years ago now to knit something for one of my sister-in-laws um, I knitted what I was knitting for her but I didn't need anything like the amount that I bought so I've had about six or seven of these balls 100 grams I think they are in my stash for like five or six years like I said I don't really carry sweater quantities worth of stash for many things and this has been sat there looking at me like when are you going to do something with me but it's not really a colour I would generally go for. Um, even though it does look gorgeous with denim, it's just not something I've ever picked up wanting to cast on. And I think in part that's because I also ordered this in the grey at the time and I knitted up um, one of the, my favourite thing sweaters. I can't remember what number. Um, maybe that's something I can show another time. Um, I knitted up a My Favourite Thing sweater in it, which is gorgeous and I love, but it's pilled quite badly. So I've been thinking, I'd like to use this, but knowing that realistically it's either got to be something that doesn't get tons and tons of wear, which then why would I spend my time knitting it, um, or something where I hold it double. So yesterday I went to a new yarn shop that has only been open since I think maybe New Year. I think they were due to open in November and they ended up being a bit delayed um, probably because of Covid like everything and um, they're called Unique Yarns and they're based at Sunnybank Mills in Farsley which is about not much more than half an hour away from here and I do really like to go and pick my yarn purchases in person where possible so this is slightly leaning into acquisitions now but it's relevant because I did go and buy it and cast it on immediately and I felt a bit righteous about that and I'm not mad about it. So to hold with my gorgeous alpaca trinky that I already had in stash, I've picked up this, again, not a me colour, very powder blue, um, absolutely gorgeous. I just called that alpaca, it's not, it's merino. Um, I picked up this absolutely gorgeous alpaca classic Rowan, which is, um like a super fine alpaca with a little bit of cotton in it but i'm essentially treating this like a surrey or like a heavy mohair so i know that this has changed my gauge for this but i have tested it and i've checked my needle size and everything else and i think it will work out i will report back hopefully next time if there is a next time um, or via Instagram, <laughs> if not. Um, I am elizabeth.knits.pod on Instagram if you want to pop over there and have a look at the other content. Um, I had lots of sewing content, so I started a new Instagram for my knitting content. I know holding this in front of me, it looks like it's probably on the smaller side, um, but I did measure, like I said, I've also swatched, and I know that this will block out a fair bit, and especially to open up those eyelets, I'm, I need to block it out to make sure that they're really clear, especially with using something with this gorgeous fuzzy halo. Um, so yeah, that's my current knitting. I have got the baby blanket corner to corner, and I've got the Knit Pearl Girl crescendo sweater, which has literally just come out and is flying off the needles. I think that'll be done pretty quickly. Fingers crossed. Um, and my final cast on is very, very little of a cast on, um, but relevant. So, final one is 
making sure that I've got all the pieces so that I don't start unraveling it as I pick it up. Um, I've literally only cast on the ribbing for the top of this, um, but eventually this will be Anka's sweater my size by Petite Knit. As I said, late to the party on Petite Knit, but I'm well and truly here for it now. Um, I swatched for this because I am using, and again, something I'll come back to in a moment, I'm using a Woolly Knit Merino cone um, held double with a beautiful silk mohair. There's a theme here, isn't there? <laughs> um, and I needed to know how many strands to get gauge, essentially, um, and also to be happy with the fabric it was making. So I'm showing you this now, even though there's hardly anything to see, because I've actually knitted about five inches of this already and pulled it all back, because even though I'd swatched, I then still wasn't quite happy with it. And I think sometimes it's really important to share the things that have been really tricky about our knitting, um, especially if we're hoping to help anybody, to like anyone who's in the same position. So um, I am not always a swatcher, I swatch for most things, especially a bigger project like this. Um, but I don't always swatch for garments because I've been knitting long enough that I sort of know my gauge for for anything that's a relatively familiar fibre or weight to me. And occasionally I've just got a good idea of, of like if I'm going to need to go up a needle size, for example. Um, the Sol Dotner, I looked at it and thought, that yarn weight, I'm going to need a four millimetre needle. And that has come with practice, definitely. Um, but for some things, I'd not used Woolly Knit before. Um, I had been stocking their website for quite a long time. And for the third time in this episode, I have been influenced by Rebecca from the Crayavea because I kept hovering over whether to order or not. And then I thought they're really quite local. Again, they're within sort of half an hour, 40 minutes of where I live. And I'd really like to support them. They're a relatively local business, even though they're over the border into Lancashire. Um, anyway, I back and forth over whether to order or not because I didn't know anyone else who had. I don't have that many in real life knitting friends, which is partly why I'm looking to be a bit more part of the online community. Um, my amazing sister-in-law, Victoria, knits as well and was really involved in getting me back into knitting in the last few years. Um, hi, Peggy. <laughs> um, and she hadn't ordered from them either. So, I ummed and ahed, I had things in my basket, I had things out of my basket. And then I watched Rebecca and she raved about them and I just thought, yeah, I'm gonna go for this. So in January, I treated myself, but I will come back to what's over my shoulder in a minute um, because acquisitions are not for everyone and that's fine. So I'm gonna put them at the end. But swatching, also not for everyone, but very important because um, I had bought beautiful silk mohair to hold double for the anchor sweater. That's not what it says, it's a DK pattern, but I kind of knew that I either wanted to knit that or maybe a no frills by petite knit and I thought for either of them just that extra like snuggly fluffiness would be perfect. So what I've done here, I'm a geek, I label my swatches, um, I've done the knit pearl girl method of like casting on 30 rows. This is all explained on a great Instagram post or highlight that she's got. I've cast on 30, 30 stitches, um, knitted three rows, just back and forth, straightforward knitting, and then gone to stockinette working flat. Um, I don't always swatch in the round. Sometimes I find it's a bit of a pain. I know there's lots of techniques for it and it's something I ought to look into a bit more. But I was just going for an overall, what's this yarn like? So I went with holding it single, the natural merino colour, held single, sorry, held double, but not with itself, with um, this silk mohair that I'd got. And I wasn't happy with it. Um, I love the drape, it's super soft. It's like next to skin soft. <laughs> so snug um but I really don't like a stitch discrepancy 
and you can see in a few places here and I blocked I was a really good girl and um, I knitted it up and then I was like oh there's a few places where I'm not happy with the tension it's not that even and I was like it's fine maybe it will block maybe it will block out not all of it did so I knew that I was not going to be happy with something knitted like that um, these are not uh, these are deliberate so they're my four pearl bumps to show that I've knitted with four millimeter needles um, so I swatched again like I said a bit self-righteous about this um, and this time I held two of the woolly knit Blanco Bianco or Blanco Merino this one Blanco it's the cream um, it's just an off-white cream um, with my silk mohair and I was much much happy with that but you can see that the drape is much affected um, however it's way way more way 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 more even like I'm much happier with the tension there so I've decided um, maybe I didn't need the mohair content maybe I'd go like halfway between the two so that I'd still get the a bit more drape but still get a little bit more of a filled in stitch especially after blocking both of these have been blocked like I say and um, so I cast on merrily went on my way with two strands of the woolly knit and because it's cream I'm still not that happy so I ripped it all back those like five inches that I knitted and I've cast on again using exactly this combination so two strands of woolly knit plus the um, silk mohair and I do think that will look absolutely gorgeous but a little bit of me was thinking if I don't need the silk mohair for this project I could keep it for something else and it would look gorgeous in, it would look gorgeous with so many things and I'd really like a just woolly knit jumper um, sweater but anyway that wasn't to be and I'd much rather use the silk mohair up and enjoy it and it'd be the right combination um, the only reason that I was like bold enough to go ahead with just casting on with the two um, woolly knits held together was because I'd swatched up another woolly knit swatch um, this was using the far ply so that's clearly where I went wrong um, I'm tripping over myself a bit now so it's clearly nearly time to stop but um, essentially I had swatched up this and was super happy with the drape and everything of it this is their four ply um, in the colour harvest which I'll come back to in acquisitions and I'm super super happy with that especially post blocking like it blocked out beautifully I'm really happy with it it's on those four millimetre needles which is what the pattern recommends so I could have knitted up the anchor sweater in this colour but I already had something else in mind for this so and I also really want an anchor sweater in the like neutral colourway um, so I made a different decision and um, I ended up even though I'd swatched I still ended up ripping back and starting again all the fun of knitting and the great thing about knitting is it's not like fabric where I've cut it out and I'm really committed once I've cut it. If I need to, I can rip back and I can think about the process and go a little bit more into that. Um, I'm a bit somewhere between being a process and a product knitter. I knit because I want the thing that I'm knitting generally or I want to give it away or I want myself to have it or I want my little boy to have it. Um, but at the same time, I do enjoy the process. I find it really relaxing most of the time, except when I'm panicking about like, have I made the right pattern and, and yarn combination? Because I think that's like one of the hardest things to do. So um, I've got three works in progress, which is about average for me. I don't tend to have anything more than that because um, I think my attention will be too divided. And I don't normally have much less than that because I like to have at least two things, like I said before. One quite simple thing that I can pick up kind of any time, bit of TV, got five minutes, um, and one where I might have to think a little bit more. 
once the crescendo sweater becomes knitted in the round for the body section that will become really really good tv knitting because it will just be knit 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 and i absolutely love that about it that i can concentrate for a little bit and then it will become like super easy and enjoyable not that the beginning's not enjoyable but just sometimes it's really nice to pick something up and be mindless so if you are not joining me for the short acquisitions section then I'm going to say goodbye to you now. Thank you so much for watching if anyone's made it this far and if you would like to give me a like or a comment on the video, um, all constructive criticism would be very welcome. If you've got any opinions on what you'd really like to see, if I choose to do this again, that would be super helpful and yeah, thank you so much. If you are joining me, then I've mentioned several times that I placed an order from Woolinit. They were amazing. The order was here so quickly. They have a really great choice of British wool and merino, cones, skeins, hanks, you name it, they do it. And I love pretty much every colourway that they do. It was really hard to decide what to go for. Um, and you can kind of tell because I've already started swatching with them, knitting up with them, I've got plans for them. So I'm going to sort of combine my dream knitting and pattern stalking with what I'm showing you now. Because mostly I've got ideas for these, but I am really open to other ideas. So if you look at one of these colourways and think that would be perfect for this sweater or shawl or hat or whatever, then pop it below. So, um, I'm going to start off with their four ply cones. So, when you place an order with Woolinit, you can order whatever combination you want, obviously, of cones or hanks or skeins. Um, I personally think the cones are particularly amazing value, especially because they've often got like an offer on or um, like Valentine's weekend, they've had 14% off all their pinks and reds. I know that they did like a Black Friday um, discount and I think they did something around Christmas or New Year as well, or maybe Halloween. Um, anyway, all that to say, it's really good value anyway, but you can often find that there'll be a discount code somewhere. At the moment, Rebecca from the Crayabaya is running the cone along and so a shout out for that i am hoping that i'll be able to join in with my um, anchor's sweater but i'm going to get far enough to know that i'm totally happy with it before i start my entry and um, the cone along in a nutshell is that if you've bought yarn on a cone that you're knitting up then you can enter it's over on instagram and i think also through her youtube channel and it's in collaboration with Woolinit. So I'm doing a bit of, like I'm not in any way affiliated with Rebecca or Woolinit at all, just a big fan of both of them. Um, so you can use, I believe, cones from Woolinit and I think your entry counts twice, or you can use a cone from anywhere and you can still enter because um, one of the really nice things about Rebecca is she seems to want to include everyone and make sure that everyone can access. And I think there's been a competition, it depends on when this video goes up obviously, but I think there's been a competition running to either win cones, and I think she's got a discount code going as well. So I'm sure that if you're over here watching this, you've already seen Rebecca's video, but um, if by any chance you haven't, pop on over, and uh, if you fancy some wool in it, then go for it. So this is the absolutely gorgeous, four ply British wool cone in the colourway Harvest. I think it's coming up fairly true to colour here. It's like a beautiful ochre kind of, it's got yellows, browns, bits of orange through it and rust through it and I absolutely love it. I swatched this, like I said, holding two strands together to get a DK because it's fingering weight and I'm really, really happy. Um, I swatched and blocked on four millimeter needles and I got about 22 stitches per, that's my pearl side, and that's the knit side. I got about 22 stitches per 10 centimeters in width 
obviously you'd need to swatch yourself to see what your gauge is like um but i'm thinking of using that to make the sarah sweater by lena hoy i've seen that knitted up on instagram by following the hashtag um but i've also seen um <laughs> queen of the cone inga from knitting traditions she's knitted this up and it looked gorgeous this is very inga colorway as well i think um so not that i'm doing like a homage to her but she'd definitely approve i think i hope she would approve um anyway sarah sweater by lena hoy and absolutely gorgeous so i'm considering doing that the only thing that puts me off from knitting that and casting it on immediately is that i think that maybe it's more of an autumnal knit so maybe something that i might want to start at the end of summer i don't like the idea that it's going to take me that long to cast it on but at the same time i would quite like to knit for the season that's coming rather than one that's just been um but anyway so that's potentially what this beautiful cone will become so probably not an entry for the cone along which ends in mid-march i think um but definitely something that will come into being this year and i absolutely adore it it's so soft um especially if you've knitted with like a, a loppy or an alifos loopy um by istex then this is i think i'll be okay with this next to skin it is rustic but it's softened already even just after one um wash and block and i think it probably would soften more um I also bought it in this absolutely beautiful cinnamon colourway, which is like a rusty brown. Um, you can see because it's factory cones that it's got like the odd random bit of other things in and amongst. I'm not mad about that. Um, I am planning to hold this double with potentially a Surrey alpaca, which I've got stashed away from an odd that I placed at Christmas. I'll show you that in a moment. Um, but if not, I would potentially look at maybe buying some Phil Kalana Tilia to hold with this, because I know that they do similar colorways. And I'd really like to knit a sort of drop shoulder, loose, not a boxy sweater, but like a loose, just chuck over anything kind of a, kind of a sweater. Um, at the moment I'm thinking it would make a gorgeous wool and honey by Andrea Mori, um, another amazing podcaster, designer, knitter, extraordinaire, I don't know how she does it all, um, or I think it would also make a really great like Oslo by Petite Knit or even No Frills. So I've got plenty of options for a gorgeous cinnamon colourway. Again, kind of more of an autumnal colour. Um, I'm not worried about wearing a jumper year round because I live in Yorkshire and we get like two weeks of summer here and it usually comes when you're not expecting it. So I'm not going to panic about not knowing like when I'll wear a jumper because um, I'll wear one most of the year, but I'm just not totally sure what to knit first. Um, okay, so I've already showed you the gorgeous merino cone that I got in the Bianco. These are ever so slightly more pricey than the four ply British wool, but they're still really, really affordable for 500 grams of um, merino. It's super soft. This is 100% next to skin soft. Um, I feel like I would always hold it double with itself at the very least, but that's probably just because I don't have the patience to knit a whole garment fingering weight just at the moment. Not saying it'll never happen, but just at the moment, not for me. Um, and the other colourway that I've bought is again channeling Inga here, the Inca Gold Merino Cone and I absolutely love this. It's a little bit more golden than it's coming up here. It's coming up very yellow. Um, I don't think I can do anything about that right now but it is just gorgeous and again this is another one where I'm thinking Actually, this is probably the one where I'm least sure about what I want to do. Um, I'm considering knitting myself some sort of Easter sweater. And I do think this colourway is much more like spring-summer for me. Like I said, I'll probably be wearing a sweater all year round anyway. 
So I need to give this one some thought. So do I like combine it with other colors and do something with a bit of a color work yoke? Or do I knit just all in this? Is that a bit much? I do love yellow. I've got yellow and a rack that's not a million miles away from this color. Um, or do I hold it double with like a mohair or hold it triple like twice with itself and with a mohair? I'm not that sure about this one. Ideas wanted, please. And then I was gonna check out Just Far Combs and I was like, I think I've been relatively restrained. I've got my free postage, which is really nice, especially considering that I really don't live very far away from the mill um, where this is all um, put onto the cones and everything. And then I saw this colorway and I couldn't resist. This is Hanks. I couldn't see this on cones. I'm sure at some points in the year that they probably do do it. Uh, this is a really soft, like blush pink. I hesitate to call it millennial pink. It's not a million miles off. It's very similar to um, the paper wreath that I've got up behind me. It's flowers, but it's paper flowers. Um, I know that the top of it's blowing out a little bit, but I don't think anyone will mind about that. Uh, so this is the shell colourway. It's like a really, really, really pale blush colour and I can just see this being gorgeous knitted up again with a mohair. Um, it would make, I think, a beautiful ranunculus or maybe I've just seen that Lizzie Hester has just released the first sweater and if I was going to hold it with mohair this would be beautiful as a first sweater, I think. Especially if I can get it to that sort of ballet pink shade by holding it with a mohair, I think that would be gorgeous. Um, these are like mega hanks. You can see they're like as big as my face. Um, these are like mega hanks, so they're 200 grams each. Um, I only got two because I wasn't totally sure how true the color would be on the photos. But I think actually it is relatively true and it's really well named shell. It is kind of like a shell pink um, or what I'd consider a shell pink anyway. So again, open to ideas. I'm not totally sure exactly what it will be. I had considered holding it double with this because I do think that would be gorgeous. But a bit of me thinks if I'm going to mute that pink anymore, it's going to verge on the point of not being a pink at all. It would be like a white with a tinge of pink. Um, I might swatch it. We will see. Um, and then I have got two more things to show you very quickly. So the first of which you've already seen, like I said, um, I've already started knitting these up. So these were an acquisition, but they're also now a work in progress already. This beautiful baby blue alpaca classic Rowan. This is kind of mid-priced um i was hoping to go to unique and find a mohair that just went perfectly with my blue um i couldn't see any mohair that they stocked but like i said they're really new and that might be something that they might look into in future i don't know um maybe it's not for them that's absolutely fine not everyone's into mohair i fully appreciate that um but yeah i've acquired I've purchased seven little balls of that. They're only 25 grams just to make sure I've got enough. I am slightly worried that I'm either going to end up with slightly over, which will annoy me because I'm not going to be able to do a lot with one of these, um, or slightly under and have to go back because that would be an annoying drive to drive half an hour for one of these. Um, I'm sure they would post me one if I got in touch. But yeah, absolutely gorgeous, super soft really pleased with them and I love to use up things from my stash that I've already got and I will be so glad to have these knitted up into a sweater finally it's their destiny I can see it coming and the very last acquisition is from a little bit longer ago so um I've mentioned Jandale a couple of times already in the last hour or my word I definitely need to wrap this up um, I've mentioned Yarndale already a couple of times, but at Yarndale, I met gorgeous Beth, who owns Beehive Yarns. Um, she does amazing hand-dyed yarn, lots in a sock base or a sock weight base, but she also does absolutely beautiful 
silk mohair and surrey alpaca and at christmas when i was feeling very sorry for myself and um, knitting from stash i thought that gives me a space in my stash to order something else so while i was feeling sorry for myself on boxing day i also placed an order with beth which arrived in the new year everybody needs a christmas break and um, so i got four of these absolutely gorgeous um kid mohair and silk blend patty i think the base is called um and the colorway is oh natural it's their undyed base um it's so it's got like this lovely shiny core it's got a beautiful halo it's really soft and because i've been to like knitting festivals and things just once or twice i've had the opportunity to actually touch lots of silk mohairs and when i went to buy this one for this um these two were the ones that for me were like the softest silkiest squishiest feel um i did go around feeling a lot of mohair yarns in september um and they were the ones that i really loved and because I decided to buy this one, I then kept an eye out on Beth's shop and looked for sort of anything that I might be sure about. And because I didn't know exactly what I was buying it for at the time, it was a pity purchase, um, I decided to go for the natural base and she had a bit of a sale on Boxing Day and this came into it and I was like, yes, good choice. Um, I feel like it will combine so well with lots of different things. So this is the one that I've been holding together for the Anchors sweater. Um, like I said that pattern doesn't call for holding together with a mohair but I think it will work really beautifully I shall report back and I bought four skeins of that so they are 50 gram skeins yeah 50 grams so I've got 200 grams which I feel is more than generous for an amount of mohair but I wanted to make sure that I would have enough for whatever project I might possibly want and if I've got some leftovers I'm not going to be cross about it it's going to be fine i will find something to do with it and last of all last acquisition this gorgeous as i said i already have something in stash that i'm thinking of holding with this and this would be it but i'm gonna to have to swatch this because i don't know how much it will change it it's also possible that i'd be able to hold it with this hornet comb because i think that might mute it down a little they are gorgeous so this is the um, kit base which is sorry alpaca and silk and this is also super soft but it's just a little bit um there's just a little bit more weight to it it's just a little bit more of a thicker lace weight than um than the kid silk mohair um and this one is called foxtails which i just thought was so cute um i've unwound one of these skeins just slightly so that you can see that there is quite a lot of variation throughout this colourway. So whilst I've held it next to the cinnamon and the Inca gold comb, and it looks totally different next to both of them, I think. Like you can see that this picks out more of the rusty orangey tones, and this picks out more of the yellow leaning, I think. Um, when you actually unwind this game, you can see that there are some like even deeper tones that can be hidden in amongst and some that are even like more of a, a like greenish rust leaning so this is definitely one to swatch and consider before I decide what I'm doing with it but I just absolutely loved it I fell in love with the colorway and like I said usually I'm quite an organized knitter but um sometimes I treat myself and like I said felt very sorry for myself and that was my treat myself purchase so there we go thank you so much if you've made it through an hour of me talking at you about knitting content and it would be great to hear your feedback see you next time maybe